Okay then you lovely lot, so keeping on the basics theme, we're going to be looking at sort of like long pole fishing, well 13 metres uh, with ground bait and just a couple of choices of hook bait and catching pretty much everything swimming. So we're going to be starting off on maggots, uh, you know, getting a few bites, getting our confidence up and then changing things up a little bit and then going to, uh, to sweet corn, try and, you know, target them bigger fish. In this case, bream and skimmers, but obviously the vendors that you fish, potentially carp, Actually, there's carp in here, uh, F1s, tench, anything, you know, anything you can think of. That's the beauty of this style that I'm going to show you. You will catch pretty much everything. And it's so simple. Don't need to involve a catapult. Don't need to involve any of them little baby pots that, you know, if you're anything like me, a little bit clumsy, spilling your bait out halfway there. We're going to be using a big pot, putting some ground bait in, a few different uh, hook baits, I say, in this instance, dead red maggots and a few bits of corn, and then just fishing the bait out, letting the fish tell you when you need to top up dead dead simple uh first things first as i said we're fishing at 30 meters got our marker uh we're going to be going through plumbing up a little later on first thing i want to talk you through though is the rig really really simple first thing i want to do is go through elastic choice though we get loads and loads of questions on elastics and what's the best kind of elastic now what you've got to consider folks is what kind of fish that you're actually targeting if it was predominantly carp, obviously you'd be fishing heavier, you'd be using a heavier elastic. In this case today, uh, I know I want to target sort of like the skimmers and the bream, which are up to sort of like four or five pound, the decent fish. Yes, there's some massive carp in here, but I'm, I'm not really interested in targeting them. If, if they come along, they come along. Uh, but hopefully I want to be targeting sort of like more of the silvers fish. So my elastic is going to replicate what I'm going for. And in this instance, because of the time of year, we are 1st of September, pinch punch 1st of the month, Richard. I forgot to do that to me, to me kids this morning. I'll do that when I get back. Um, we are fishing a Nines Jury Slip Hybrid Elastic. Now, the beauty of a Nines is it's got enough cushioning in should I hook some at Great Big, but also it's got enough sort of like softness in the elastic if I get some of these little small fish that I'm not going to be bumping them. I said it now, folks, I'm not going to be bumping them. I'm probably going to be bumping some fish, but... Unfortunately, it's part of the course for skimmer fishing. You know, you will ultimately bump a few fish. Some days you won't do any, but other times, you know, when there's a few rocking up, you will bump a few fish. So that's why I want to keep that to uh, to a minimum, hopefully, and hopefully everything I hook get in. So by using a soft dish, but you know, something that's going to set the hook in the depth of water that we're fishing, that's what we're going for. Connection wise, you know, you all know that I use like the bead connection, but you know, whatever you want to use, plastic connector, Dacron, it doesn't really matter. One thing I would say though, mainline wise, now pretty much all through, yeah, from spring all the way through until we get the first frost, I'll use a 0.18 mainline for all this style of fishing, you know, for catching everything swimming. 0.18 mainline, and then that allows you to use pretty much ever, whatever hook length you want. Um, 0.10 in this instance maybe, 0 0.12, 0 0.14, it shouldn't really matter. But what it does allow you to do is step up should you be catching some bigger F1s, bigger carp, that kind of thing, just gives you a little bit more confidence. So 0.18 AccuPower mainline. Now you'll see, let me put it the other side of me, of the pole. I've got quite a little bit of line between pole and float there, which is I'm a, I'm a massive advocate on. Reason being is I don't want to go too short, again, for tangling purposes when I'm shipping my rig out. Uh, but I don't want to go too long that it's going to restrict me from hitting the bites. One thing I have got on, as always, is back shots just above my float. So four, four to six inches above your float, I've got two number eight back shots on. And what that allows me to do is keep a nice tight line from my back shots to my float with my pole right over the top. So I'm keeping my rig nice and stable. Next thing to consider is floats. Now, again, we, we've done lots of videos on these, but keeping it nice and simple... We've got five foot of water, which you can see there, 16 inches, exactly sort of five foot, and I'm plumbing up to the bottom of the body in the float. We'll go through that in a sec. Uh, now, up to sort of like six foot, I'd be using a 414s. Anything deeper or a little bit of wind on, I'd go heavier, but keep it nice and simple. I've got um, an F1 maggot float on here, carbon stem, does everything what I want. That shape of float, that shape of body, so popular, folks. Honestly, nine times out of 10, I would use a float like this. So coming down the rig, you'll see you've got three bits of silicon on there to hold the floating position. Just under me float there, if Richard can zoom in on it, I've just got a tiny um, number 11 stop, which is what's called a trimming shot, just to bring me float down that little bit lower 
so I don't have my float like a blooming lighthouse with loads of bristles sticking out. Yeah, so that's just to bring that float down. It's not incorporated into my rig whatsoever into the shotting system. It's just so I can bring that bristle down a little bit lower. And then coming right down to the business end. Now, I've gone for today um, a tapered shopping, shotting rig, which again, you know, we use a lot on these kind of venues or certainly coming into sort of like when you are targeting silvers and, you know, maybe all through winter I'll use this, but basically a tapered shotting pattern or just a simple bulk and droppers. Bulk and droppers for me, I want to see what's in my peg first, that's why I'm using this one. If there was a lot of fish there and I wanted to get straight down to them, that's when I'd opt to use a, a bulk and two dropper shot. So basically where the last lot of my tapered shot is there, that's where I'd have my bulk and I'd have two dropper shots down here somewhere. But today all I've got, let's go from the hook length end first, uh, I've got a 16s GPMB, again straight out of the packet, one of these ones. Well, this is a 4 inch GPMB, but I've got a 16s version of one of them on. Straight out of the packet, the 6 inches, and what I've done, I've just trimmed it down to 4 inches. Yeah, I don't want 6 inches because, again, I've been through this before, that's more deeper water, that's 8 foot plus 6 inches. Anything up to 8 foot, 4 inches, you've seen that bite a little quicker. Uh, so 16s hook, 4 inches. Uh, point 13 and then I've got a series of number nine shots dead simple so number nine right on my loop to loop my hook length uh, and then probably the same distance again I've got another number nine and then probably three inches another number nine and then just an inch another number nine so you can see that tapered shutting pattern it's such an effective way of fishing you know so if the fish are watching your bait fall through the water it's just falling nice and natural and you can see them little dinks um, but as I said, you know, the fish are feeling really confident and that's when I'd go for a bulk and droppers. Um, so nothing complicated with the rig. Uh, I think the next thing we need to do is go through plumbing up. So let me swivel, are we going in one Richard? No. So I'm going to put a plummet on and let's go and see where I plumbed up to. Right then folks, so plummet's on, nice 20 gram plummet. Now what I'm, what I'm looking, I'm not cooking on a wok. What I'm looking to get is for that float to be sort of like that far out of the water. I don't want to be plumbing to sort of like middle of the body, not fishing on the slope, fishing in the deeper bit of water, on a bit of silt potentially. So I want to be at the bottom of the body. So let's go out there. So nice comfy distance. The reason I've chosen to fish 13 meters, it's just nice and comfy. It's away from any bankside disturbance. Fishing naturally like to settle at that distance, but by all means, if you wanted to have sort of like a couple of swims on the go, so a great area as well is sort of like your six, seven metre line, you know, keeping two distances away from each other. So you're getting two completely separate shoals of fish. So first things first, let's ship out to required destination. Now markers wise, obviously you know what I'm like for my markers. The first marker I'm going to choose is the back of my pole on the back of my leg. So I know I'm going back to the same spot every single time because you do have to have some, some bit of accuracy with this. It's not like... As I said, we're not putting little baby pots on and like sneaking a bait in or anything. We're putting a, a big, big volume of bait in and looking to catch over sort of like 12 inch uh, area, something like that. So first things first, get an our marker. The next one, I've got three trees. What do you reckon? I reckon they're older trees or beech trees across there. Not so, They look silver, so they could be silver, but they're not silver birch. So let's go right in line with that first one, that main one. And there you can see I'm right on the bod bottom of the body of my float and I'll just give it a little bit of a plumb round just to make sure it's not actually too bad that bottom it's not very silty see where I'm lifting it up and dropping it if that's sort of plugged into the bottom then I know I'll be on a lot of silt so just give it a nice plumb round there just make sure it's the same distance because obviously what you've got to allow for is any sort of like undertow on the water and what I might want to do or what I do like doing is certainly letting my rig uh, trot through slightly with the undertow so it looks completely natural if there is a tow on and I'm holding back it doesn't look as natural. Obviously that's all about on the day experimenting. So yeah, happy with that. Come back and then what I'm gonna do is quickly run through the bait I've got and I'm gonna feed some bait and I'm just gonna get straight on it, folks. I'm just gonna get straight on it. How dare I? But that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get a pot, big pot. So bait wise, I've got some dead red maggots yeah, I'll only be putting a few of them in because I want to use my ground bait as a base for the fish to, obviously, to attract the fish. And then I don't want to be putting loads of, so I'll probably only put sort of like that in every time with sort of like a full pot of, of ground bait. So I'm not giving the fish loads of choice. I want them to pick out my hook bait. I'd imagine, because there's a lot of little babby fish in here, we'll get little, little babby fish, which obviously fishing folks, it's all about getting bites. But 
if they're becoming too much of a nuisance, you know, catching too many sort of through the through the water, that's when I can change to da, 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 sweet corn. It's probably one of the most overlooked baits for certainly bream and skim is the raise. It's a fantastic bait. Really good for, I know it's not today, but really, really good for when it's uh, windy or got a bit of a toe on because it's such a heavy bait. It stays exactly where you're putting it. I absolutely adore using sweet corn. It does pick out the bigger fish. I'll be putting, you know, sort of, I don't know, 10 or a dozen grains of corn in with a few maggots. But then my main, as I said, my main bait is my favourite sort of super crush expander. Uh, all I've done with this, preparing wise folks, again, done loads of videos on this, dead simple. One um, pint, it, literally it's one of them. So completely full one of them a ground bait, a completely full one of them a water. Mix them both together as soon as you get to your peg and then it'll take sort of 30, 40 minutes and then just put it through a four mil riddle or just give it a, a right nice mix up. You don't really need to riddle it to be fair. How do we fair? You know what I mean? It'll just get a right nice uh, fluff on and then that'll just completely sink to the bottom and just start, well, it'll just start drawing fishing from from uh, from miles. It's just, it's a superb bait. No food content in there, but the scents and aromas coming off it. Oh, it's amazing. Can't stress how good that is. So, Here's my mix then to start off with. So we've got a little little pinch of dead reds. They go in. A few grains of corn. They go in. A few more. Three more. And then I'm just going to... I'm not going to... In fact, let me come over here so I can show you. I don't want to put it in loose because five foot, I want to make a little bit of a ball out of it so that it breaks up probably about halfway or something. So when that ball starts to break up, you're getting that lovely cloud come off it, but then it's going to go over a bigger area if you like. So I'm just going to... Get sort of like that amount, uh, give it a squeeze and then put it in. So it's not sort of like really, I'm not really binding the ground bait if you like. I'm not like proper giving it a massive squeeze so it does break up on the bottom. And then just take your time when shipping out folks, no rush. The main thing is we want to be super accurate and fish right over our feed. So first things first, get in line with the pole at the back of your leg. Yeah, so that's nice and accurate. And then we're lining up with that the first, the, the biggest one of them, sort of three trees, if you like. So pull nice and low to the water and then just twist that round. So you can see, you see that ground bait is starting to break up a little bit uh, already. So obviously when that's on the bottom, you're going to be over like a, like a dinner plate size. You know what I mean? I like that, like a dinner plate size of bait on the bottom. So nice and quick, come back. We'll get our rig and I'm going to go for two uh, dead red maggots to start with. I'll show you how I'm hooking them. So I'm hooking everything through the point, folks. You know, I don't hook them through the uh, through the fat end anymore, through the bottom. <laughs> I'll show you around here. Is that on? Let me have a little... It's on. I can't see if it's on, Richard. Is that on? Yeah? Can you see that there? Yeah? So two, two red maggots just up through the tip. And I'm fully expecting to get bites pretty quick, possibly on the drop. So there's a couple of different ways of laying the rig in. Obviously the tapered uh, rig, the way to lay it in is flick it out to the side, get on with your marker and then hold a tight line to the float. I'd imagine that would get nailed as it's falling through the water. Hopefully it doesn't and we can get down to the bottom. More ends. So you see the angle I've got on that float now as them shots are coming too. Let all resistance go, oh yeah, we've got to the bottom, perfect. So let's see what happens. Now, I have got a little bit more bristle out than what I'd normally have, certainly for maggot fishing. But the re there's a reason for that, and that's because, um, you know, we're fishing a little bit over depth, and I want to give the certainly the bigger fish, the that was a big swirl there, the bream and the skimmers chance that when they take that hook bait, I want to make sure they're on. The other reason, oh, a bit of a dink then, the other uh, reason is for when I put corn on. Um, you know, obviously corn, a little bit of a heavier bait. Certainly if, you know, that rig starts to drag through, then it's going to sink your float down lower. So that's why I've got a little bit of bristle showing. That's my excuse anyway, folks, for it being like a lighthouse. Oh, we had a bite then, like a lighthouse. So you can see the little bubble on it already there. Oh, here we go. Oh, we missed it. That was a proper bite as well. Well, liner. So again, lay it in, hold a tight line to it. Hopefully, we, no, something's intercepted that on the drop. Lift that up. You saw that wasn't sort of like falling through, so we knew something had that on the drop. Which is what I thought I'd have got first go in. Oh, oh he was on him. And he's burgling with maggots. That was a little tiny fish then. So this next one, uh, next one I'm going to lay it in. I'm going to lay it in a little bit different, which is where 
like a Balkan drop has come in, comes into play a little bit more. And that's where I'll flip the rig out, draw it back so my shots are over where I'm feed, where I've fed, and then flop my float right over it. Flop my float right over my shot. So just rather than holding that tight line so you can see everything going on through the water, you're just getting down to the fish a lot quicker. Some big fish there, you know, folks. Up in the water, they're not carp either. So flick this one out to the side, get onto your marker, bring your shots back, dink, put your float right over it. And then it settles a lot quicker. Still going to get this at the small fish, but not as much interest uh, on the drop. Oh, that was a little dink then. Go on. It's such a fabulous way of fishing. They say you can take your time, just put your bait in and fish it out. We know there's a few fish there, we're getting signs, there's odd bubble coming up. That was a little dink then. Here we go. Obviously if they were, um, as soon as you stuck, that might be a perch, you know. Perch over ground bait, what is going on? Um, as soon as you stop getting signs of fish, which I'd imagine in this instance there's many here, probably be 10 minutes, then you just put another, another ball in. It's just superb way of fishing. It is a little baby perch, let's get him netted. Look at him, beautiful. Beautiful baby perch, love perch. They're probably most people's first fish in the old wide world that they ever catch perch. I love them, I do. They're normally swell your blooming up bait and that, and you've got to use a disgorger. But the beauty of perch is you never have to change your bait after a perch because they don't, they don't chew them. Look at that, still intact. So I'm going to go back in again on them, and I'm going to lay it in the same way. Don't need to change the corn yet because I'm not getting mither with small fish. But even if I was, I'd still be still be more than happy getting bites, folks. You know what I mean? But I will we'll have a quick go on corn just to show you. See, something's intercepted that on the drop. Get a little lift up. Yeah, we'll have a, a quick go on corn just to show you. It's going to take us a bit longer to get a bite, but hopefully it's going to be, you know, slightly better fish. But the beauty of maggots is you're going to catch absolutely everything swimming on them. You know what I mean? So certainly if you're just starting off pole fishing or whatever style of fishing, I can't recommend maggots highly enough. In conjunction with a little bit of ground bait like we're putting in just to attract them fishing, uh, you're just going to get bites all day long on them. It's just superb way of fishing. So now you can see like them little, ooh, that was a little dink then, them bits of bubbles coming up so we know there's a fish in the vicinity. Hopefully it'll be on, on our uh, hook in a minute. Not lifting and dropping to start with, he's a massive fish here, just gone out, big carp, don't want him, I think he's a bit rather large. Yeah, I'm not interested in lifting and dropping at the minute, uh, just want to see what's happening over me, over the bait. If you weren't getting bites on no signs then, you know, little tiny movements on your float, that makes a massive difference sometimes, you know, as if the fish are watching your bait. Um, that can really, you know, sort of induce a bite if you like just naturally just drifting out a little bit this this rig just through that surface slight, slight bit of surface skim right i'm just going to get oh no i'm not i was just going to say i was going to give it a bit of encouragement then but we just had a little bit of a dink so if there's something there i'm just gonna lift that float up slightly now if i do get like a little babby fish a perch or a good in the summer then i know moving it's not right but sometimes see we had that indication straight away sometimes it can work in your favour if there's, you know, obviously bigger fish down there watching the bait. Just nice knowing, certainly on maggots, when that float was in there, you don't know what it's going to be. Might be that, you know, that, that bait's been nailed already, folks, you know. Oh, that was a little dink then. Won't bloody looking. You know, it don't take them, uh, take them long to clean the bait out. Certainly a place like this with the beautiful bathing all today and lodge pool. Phenomenal fish here. So many fish in it, certainly silverfish. Big skimmers and bream. Really good. So I'm just letting that float drift out naturally. We're probably eight inches to the to the left of our marker. Because naturally that bait's going to spread out a little bit on the bottom. You know, as you certainly the bigger fish start coming in and start rooting around, it's going to push the bait out a little bit. If there was more sort of a, a bigger tone of water, you know, you might catch sometimes two or three foot away from your from where you feed. Always keep that feed going in the same spot though and then look to sort of fish around it. That's the main one. So I won't give this much longer. Um, 
you know, I'm expecting a bite certainly within five minutes. And if I don't get a bite within five minutes, what I'll do is I'll come back and put some more bait in. Certainly, like obviously the likes of maggots, if you're not getting bites, you should. You should always be getting the odd, odd sign on maggots. That's the beauty of them. There's either something very large there or I've, I've been wiped out already with the bait. Still quite a few bubbles coming up. Oh, that was something then. Get ready. Yeah. Is that another perch? That's telling me though that I've been wiped out because perch, they're not, they don't come to ground bait normally. Um, they probably just come into them loose offerings of like, you know, the maggots that I put in. So what I'll do, I'll just put a, just give it a little bit of a top up, a few bit more ground bait. It shows you two, two lovely perch already. Look at them. Beautiful. Love them. So angry. So angry. Look at them. Beautiful perches. Be quite happy with them. But then perch are a good sort of like indicator that certainly if you're feeding ground bait, that you have been wiped out. Uh, definitely on a fishery like this, um, where there is a lot of skimmers in. So it's telling you that you need to put some more bait in because I said they don't really like ground bait perch. Still going to put a few maggots in again, not loads. A few maggots, a few bits of corn. And then another one of uh, another one of them. So we'll get a bit around, but it's bigger than a golf ball. Tangerine. Tangerine size ball. Every time. So again, take your time when you're shipping out. Get onto your marker. So pull at the end of that leg. On that bigger tree. Put into the water. Just do everything nice and slow, nice and smooth. No rush in it. Come back, so by the time you've come back, baited up, shipped out, all that bait will be on the bottom waiting for him. We'll have a quick go with maggots again, just to see. Two red maggots, and then I'm going to have a go with corn. I can't believe that there's no skimmers coming in. Now, the, how fast these feed on the feeder, they can wipe you out within seconds, so it's probably been what's been happening today. I'll lay that out. The beauty of dead maggots as well, rather than live maggots, when you're shipping out fast, is they don't spin up proper. You don't get tangles at all. That's it, perfect. I'm going to hold it over my bait this time, rather than let it drift. See, it's bubbles like that. That's indicator that there's fish feeding on the bottom. We don't usually get that with perch, uh, but with certainly everything else, so like your skimmers, your hybrids, your bream, carp, Oh, little tiny bubbles there, so they're skimmer bubbles there. Definitely some in the area. Come on. Oh, big bubble. Just shows you how quick they come into that feed, doesn't it? Go on, the fishies. Oh, 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 oh. See, if I'd have dotted that float a little bit lower, then I'd be striking at them and potentially missing them. I want to make sure they're on. Yeah, another little dink then. You will get lift bites occasionally as well, folks, on, on this rig, sitting and fishing a little bit over depth with heavy droppers. So if your float sort of comes out and the body sticks... Oof, that was a fast bite, that was a liner. Got too giddy, didn't I? Yeah, if your float sort of sticks out a little bit more than sort of like a couple of seconds, then give that out something that's intercepted that and drop. And give that a, a bit of a lift because it's usually it's skimmers. So let's add that as well. Right, see if we can get one of these on the drops. I'm going to hold the tight line this time. I'd imagine there'd be a little tiny fish. See, something's intercepted that there. Yeah, a little tiny fish. So, what I'm going to do now, obviously, there's a lot of tiny fish there. I'm going to put a little bit of corn on, but well. You would not mind catching roach like that every go in, little dumpy roach, sort of going on for a couple of ounces. Beautiful fish, absolutely pristine they are. Never even seen up before. Well, they are, they've just been, just seen my hook, haven't they? So, corn wise then, I'm milking the corn, so I'm picking out a smallish bit of corn. Let's go for that one. And I'm hooking it in the corner, and just letting it rest on the bend of the hook. Yeah? Can you see that? Just so all that hook's exposed, so when it's on the bottom, it's uh, 
go into the fish's mouth very, very quickly. So, let's see how we get on with uh, the corn. Might take a little bit longer to get a bite, but hopefully it's going to be a slightly bigger fish. That can be the trouble sometimes with, with maggots. You will get, you know, a lot of smaller fish. Not that it bothers me, I just love catching fish. Um, you know, sometimes you can, you know, wade your way through them, but it's quite nice to, you know, go down the more selective bait route sometimes and, you know, pick out the, the bigger fish. Here we go then, folks. So, as I was saying, always going to take a little bit longer on corn, but so much more selective. You know, probably took a full five minutes. Just about to blow my feed again then, I promise. Um, but we know there's fish there, they're, they're still odd and fizzing. You know what I mean? Plus, obviously, we fast forward and everything as well for you, lovely lot. You know what I mean? Just have such good days on waters like this, on this style of fishing. It's just amazing. I absolutely adore it. Here we go. Oh, lovely poppadom. Lovely poppadoms. These are what you want, folks. And obviously, the beauty of these kind of waters, which are pretty much, you know, obviously carp dominated, these skimmers just get left alone. So they see all that, you know, the boilies and the pellets going in for the carp. And it's fish like these, if we can get hold of them, because they're blooming slimy. Fish like them beauties, they just get left alone, left to sort of like go larger and larger and larger. And that, that's a small one for here, folks. That is like, no joke, that's a small one for here. Perfectly hooked in the top lip. Good, sort of pound 12, I'd say, just short of two pound. But that's what you can expect from these kind of waters and fishing like we are. So what I'd do now, what was my next step? I'd, I'd be straight back on with the corn again. I wouldn't feed because there's still a few fish there. You can still them bubbling. And just let the fish tell you what's up. We, we knew it wasn't right before because we caught them perch. So we had to refeed it again. Uh, and then the next fish, obviously, a little bit more selective bait on the corn. We've got that skimmer or bream. No, it's a skimmer, that, isn't it? It's not a bream. Uh, but, yeah, you know, get trying it, folks. Hopefully, you'll have a, a great day. Let us know how you get on and, yeah, you'll just absolutely adore it. Just take your time with it. Keep it simple with the bait choice. Keep it simple with your rigs. And, uh, yeah, just have a fantastic day's fishing. Yeah! Right, you lads. Very, very sorry to interrupt your video watching. How dare you? Quickly, if you haven't already noticed, we have managed to write a book, haven't we? Yes, we have, Which Jamie. Which is full of all our very bestest methods and features or whatever else we do on this wonderful subject of fishing. So if you haven't had a look already, go and have a look at winningways.shop and buy one for yourself.